This is an SM Media production. Hi folks and welcome to the latest episode of the Rangers Assessment, the SM Media Exclusive Rangers Podcast. I'm Scotland Pike, it's an absolute pleasure to be your host. I'm delighted to be joined by this week's guest. First of all, he's a man we've seen on the channel before. It's a pleasure to welcome back from the Ibrox Channel Podcast, Andrew Simpson. Hello, how you doing Scott, you alright? I'm very well, thank you. It's good to have you on again. Good to, good to be here, my friend, good to be here. And we also have making his first appearance on the podcast, but he has done a bit of writing for us in the the first couple of weeks and been very impressive in his writing. It's a pleasure to welcome on the show, Scott Mackay. Thanks for having me, Scott. Absolute pleasure. I'm looking forward to this. It's obviously going to be our last show before the season starts. It's going to be a busy show. We've got a lot to talk about. Andrew, it's been it's been a weird couple of weeks in terms of we'll, we'll touch on signings first. Obviously, Danilo's done. He's the now the, the new number 99. I don't think We've ever had a number num- another number ninety nine before at Irox. I don't think we ever will again. But Danilo is now the the new striker. I think this one, could, as I've said for a while, once I heard this name was announced, I thought it makes a lot of sense. If we can get it over the line, it'd be excellent. And again, it's another real impressive sign that Bill wants his players in. He's got them in early in terms of kind of usual Rangers transfer history. I think this ticks all the boxes. I think him well, and Dessler could be it, a massive partnership. It really does, doesn't it? There's just something about a Brazilian striker, isn't there? Um, especially with the number 99. I think that's always a good sign, really, isn't it? Um, definitely. Um, you know, looking at his videos um of his time at Feyenoord and in the Edrevisi, um he's he's got some pedigree to him. Um, I think um his stats last season, I think 10 goals and 34 appearances uh, with three assists, so not exactly setting the header alight. Um, likes to go from distance. Um, it seems that some of his goals he scored some absolute beauties um, from outside the box. So that's something that I think we've lacked in recent times. Nobody will just take a shot from outside the box. Um, and one big thing for me was uh, there's nothing notable injury wise <laughs> apart from a, a hamstring injury back in 2019 for about three months. So that that's that's definitely out the out of the ordinary for us, isn't it? It certainly is, yeah. And it's Scott. It shows a kind of big thing of. I mean, we know the difference between Celtic and Rangers last summer was in, was goals and kind of cutthroat nature from, from forward areas. Dessers has come in, Sima, Lammers, now Danilo. Whether that's that, I don't know. I would expect it to be, but it's a massive statement of intent to, to fill that area. Oh, definitely. Um, he gave up the, the Jews to the new, the back bill. Um, they backed him a lot of money, especially with this signing. Um. I'm looking forward to it mostly just because it's another Brazilian. <laughs> Having won the team. Um, it's always good for a wee bit of flair and trickery. Um, I think he's going to bring goals. So I was a wee bit concerned before we signed him that there wasn't going to be enough, enough pace up front. Obviously, David says training had been a bit like a land of giants. And obviously, with the, with the rumours that Sakala's leaving, um, I was kind of a wee bit on edge about how we were going to getting behind defences and not predominantly we play against the low block but um, it'll definitely bring something different up to the strike force anyway Andrew can you name the four Brazilian players that have played for Rangers actually sorry uh, there's, there's only three only three oh that makes it a bit easier then Danilo's um, one name the other two <laughs> was it he- not, was it Herrera he wasn't Brazilian was he no, he was Mexican no he was Mexican wasn't he that's right Um, it was uh there was definitely one in twenty thirteen. Um I can't think now off the top of my head. No. Nope. A centre back. Yeah, centre back. Um begin with a C. I can't remember his name now. Kribari. Kribari. Was that it? Was it Kribari? We had Emerson Kribari playing for Rangers That's between it. 2012 and 2014. And the other one Scott scored a Champions League goal for Rangers. Aye, Emerson, I think we signed Emerson. Him. 
Yeah. Middlesbrough, uh, I think it was. He played for Middlesbrough, Middlesbrough, yeah. I mean, that was the same. That was the same summer. Like Big McLeish brought in, like Edgar Lostenstad and all that kind of thing. That was that was a horrible season. Yeah. <laughs> was it Panathinaikos he scored against? Yes, it was. Uh, yeah. Yeah, uh, that was the season. Yeah. Alan McLeish had to, had to raid oh. Poundland. That was the oh, God, Poundland dark summer. times. Remember that Andrew talked about that last. Oh, episode, I do, like, I do. Oh my goodness. God, oh they, yeah. They were the days, but it's very much not a summer like that. It's obviously been a summer where. Michael Beale was clearly identified what he wants to do. Dessers, he had to take a bit of time to get him. He's obviously had to spend a bit of time to get Jose Fuentes, which we'll go on to in a minute. That's felt like a lifetime since that was first mentioned, right. but looks close. Danilo, I don't think it was ever in doubt. I think it was just a case of both clubs agreeing a fee. I've been told it's not as high as what was being reported. I think it's somewhere on the kind of five and a half million mark, which is a lot of money for Rangers to spend, right. but for a Pazil, for a Brazilian striker, obviously, if he hits the ground running in Glasgow, that's you could double your money easily. Hundred percent, hundred percent. So we're now looking at obviously with Danilo, Danilo and Dessers look to be the front two. But Scott, I look at Rangers now. We'll get into the friendlies later on, where I think the shapes are quite hard to call, but. Danilo and Dessers have both they've a lot of money been spent on them. They're both going to play. Aye, aye, definitely. There's no doubt about it. That's what you forward link. Um, obviously, we'll get into pre-season later on, but you've not been able to see what's kind of um, what's kind of going with the plan going into the season. I'm a wee bit apprehensive about it, but at the same time, it's uh, it's bringing a variety of our attack, which is which is what's needed in terms of how to beat a low block. As I said earlier, it's basically all we're going to play against all season, apart from the four old fun games. So, yeah, hopefully, hopefully it brings some decent football to the side as well. Which and is I, I spoke to I spoke to our our friend Johan Brinkle from the the final King Galil pod, and he said something very interesting because obviously Dessers had, Dessers had been there in the past. Danilo and Dessers are two very different types of strikers. Dessers is obviously. More of a kind of Morelos type where he's going to hold the ball up. He might not be your guy to get you 30 goals a season, but he's going to do a lot to take defenders away. Whereas Danilo maybe isn't the kind of... It, the word he used was lazy, but whether it's whether it will be, is I don't know. But I think they're going to complement each other really well. You're going to see Danilo, I think, is the kind of finisher. Dessers is more the kind of workhorse of the front two. You're going to have Lammers in behind, who I think has probably been the highlight of pre-season. But it's certainly... A case of the kind of fees, Andrew, the money that's been spent. If you're a striker, you need to score goals, and both will need to, both will have a lot of pressure on them, probably in themselves yeah. more than anybody. Oh, definitely. I totally agree. Um, it's interesting actually looking at Feyenoord over the past couple of years because um, there was a chunk of the fans that were looking at because uh, um, when Dessels left for Cremonese, uh, Danilo replaced him, mm-hmm. um, which is quite ironic in a sense. But uh, some of the fans, because they were linked beforehand, were looking at them possibly both them playing together, uh, which is like some sort of weird alternate universe. But it, it's a fantastic outlay from the board. It shows us uh, we're serious. You know, we've not invested properly um, for a long time. Uh, yes, we did spend some money last season. You know, obviously, that has been spent on the wrong kind of players per se. Um, but no, it's it's exciting. It is exciting. Um, it shows that they are serious. Beals being backed, and if you look at who Beals brought in already, you know, in January he's completely changed the midfield on a minimum budget, uh, bringing in Raskin and Campwell. So you know, we we do have to trust them. Um, the only thing at the minute is um, it's how long they'll take to gel and to play together. I think that's the thing at the minute. Scott. The longest running transfer saga of the summer has not been Harry Kane's. Well, whether he moves to Tottenham, but what it isn't going to be Kylian Mbappe. It has been Jose Sifuentes, and it looks as if it's finally going to be resolved. I remember first hearing this in the beginning of May, so it's felt nearly three months we're at now before this is has been announced. It's always been kind of a case of it's. I think it's always been a case he would be, he would come to Rangers. It's just a matter of when. We heard the other week it was a pre-contract. It's now going to be. In the summer, it's going to be roughly about a million pounds. It just completes the midfield, as Andrew says. Bill's completely changed it. Raskin's command, Cantwell is command. Both of them, I think, are main starters going forward. So Fuentes is going to be something different. Again, spoke to another uh, American journalist. He says very similar in terms of what kind of number eight, in terms of what they've got with uh, Weston McKinney, he kept re- re- referencing to, which I found very interesting. 
So he's going to be that kind of perfect foil, I think, for Raskin and Cantwell and just be that kind of main kind of box-to-box midfielder that Rangers haven't had, as long as I can remember that, Rangers haven't had a midfielder like that. So it's going to be something different. He's still very young. Something that somebody Rangers can sell on down the line. I think the business is, this summer has been really good and I think this could be the one that I, I think for a relatively low fee, I really like. It's definitely my favourite um, signing for the summer anyway. What he brings to the midfield for me, Scott, is my buddy. Um, you look at like, he's a Ryan Jack, John Lundstrom. John Lundstrom, I've got my own private thing on, I'm not getting that just now. Um, but Sifuentes is going to be a ball carrier. He's got a bit of tackle about it. He's not the smallest player in the world either. I think he comes in about five foot nine or something. Yep. But what I've read about him, he's quite robust. So he's not going to be short of a tackle either. Um, hopefully he's going to win his plenty of midfield battles next season. Um, a lot of games in the league are a lot one and lost in the midfield. And I think it's really, really exciting. He also looks as if he's got a good finish on him when he gets forward as well. For stuff I've seen for Los Angeles, um, it looks as if he's, he's got a bit of an end product as well. Left footed, which also is another box ticker. We've not really got a, a left footed centre mid. Can't remember the last time I had one. Um, so, yeah, I, I think he's going to be a really, really good signing. Andrew, I what I like about this is is that I think Scott made a good point there. Jack, Lundstrom, Kamara, the one phrase to describe them all is neat and tidy. Raskin's command, very much. I, can, I think Raskin's ball carrying has been really good since the command. Mm. You can see, I thought we, we saw a bit of the, the difference he can make when he come on against Newcastle. I think he's going to be, I think, enjoy him while he's here because I don't think he's going to be here long. Can't well, we know what he does. We know he's a kind of number 10. We'll, I'll maybe kind of make a point about him later on, but Sifuentes is another example of just how much this midfield needs to change and I think you're going to have a perfect combination. Whether the, whether the three of them play all the time together, I don't know because I think there's going to be certain games you might need a wee holding midfielder in like a, like a John Lundstrom, like a Ryan Jack, but I think Raskin, Sifuentes, Cantwell, they all are first, first team players for me. Oh, 100%. You know, just looking at the video, so the, the fans at LAFC absolutely love him. Um, you know, he's got decent ability, great ball control. Um, he's, he's more direct as well. We'll take the ball and go, which is just something I like to see. You know, we, we've had far too much, especially last season, where we'll take the ball, look side to side, move it around, um, obviously pre bail um, he, he looks strong, someone that can win the ball back and regain possession, which is something that we've seen from Campwell as well. Um, so obviously, don't get me wrong, both won't be doing the same thing, but it'll be interesting to see the midfield. Like you say, I think you know it, it might change up depending on the game. Uh, and it will be interesting to see how um, Sifuentes does cope with that low block and how he can hopefully unlock it. You know, obviously his crossing ability seems pretty decent, good at picking people out as well. Um, so yeah, it'll be interesting to see, definitely. Definitely yeah. excited about this one. It's been about two months in the pipeline, so yeah. Uh, yeah. It always, it's, it's always looked like it's going to happen now, finally. Well, and we'll get into to pre-season. We've had a, a few games. I think there's a lot to get into here. I think there's a lot of different things. Let's start with the, the first game, obviously, was Newcastle. I think we saw a lot in that. Newcastle were obviously the best team to, that Rangers have come up against, but it was always just a case, obviously, Alan McGregor's night, but we saw a bit of a different setup. Scott, what was your takeaways from the Newcastle game? Um, I actually thought it was more of first half. We watched a we watched we seen how the Rangers are going to set up in terms of when they're under a cosh. And I thought we, we dealt with Newcastle relatively well. Um we came into it kind of end of the first half with a good first fifteen minutes when we come back out. Um when the game changed for me when Raskin came on. When Raskin came on, he took Gabriel by the horn, controlled the midfield. Um, yeah, we, we, we played okay. Obviously, you're up against quality opposition, so you can't be too harsh. It's pre-season friendly. Um, but I, was, I thought it was a good workout for the team because we were the ones chasing the ball. It's kind of... Um, when you watch Rangers, it's not something you see often. Is being the underdog, being under the cosh. But I, I thought it was a good workout. I thought it would get fit, more fitness in the legs. Um Plus the atmosphere for the for the Newcastle supporters, mm. that was some some crowd they brought with them. It was it felt more like a like an actual match rather than a preseason friendly. It didn't really have that vibe to it. And I thought uh, Alan McGregor got a, a worthwhile testimonial as well. I thought he got a, it done him justice. The actual match you see him you see him in the first half and he conceded his goal. He was still 
<laughs> still kind of going off his nut at the defence. Um, overall, I thought it was a good run out of um, the team. Yeah, I would agree with that. We'll move into the Hamburg game, Andrew. I thought, again, a lot of a lot of exciting things. I thought the, the kind of likes we'll get into the next two games, but I thought we saw kind of Lammers, Sakala, I thought was quite good in that game. Dowell, Raskin, I thought Yilmaz was pretty good. I thought it was a lot to take away from the Hamburg game. And it was a pretty good game. You know, it was a pretty good game of football, wasn't it? Obviously, it's a bit of a different opposition. Um, you know, a little bit of a party atmosphere as well. Um, you know, interesting thing I took away from the game, because uh, we're trying to analyse the tactics and the style of play. Um, you know, there's no necessarily no discernible style of play that play at the minute uh, that we're seeing, but of course, there is a lot of experimentation going on in pre-season. Um, the one thing that I, I did see was Lammers, uh, the way that he can kind of pounce upon like a mistake and a loose ball. We did it against Newcastle, scored a great goal, um, and you know I am liking I am liking the look of him. Um, I'll be honest with you, I didn't see too much of Seema. Uh, I was dipping in and out of that game. Um, but uh, a lot of the reports, it wasn't um, too good per se. Um, but you know what, it, it, it was a decent result. Um, it was hard to concede late on, but um, you know, at least it was a, a win on the board for pre-season. <laughs> that was what I could really take from it. And you know what, it's always good um, with uh, the Hamburg and the Rangers fans, uh, you know, again, another party atmosphere, so... Yeah, it was a part of the atmosphere. Let's just bring it down, I said, and talk about the Olympiacos game. <laughs> wow. I mean, Scott, first of all, I want, to, I want to be honest and say that I thought there was, I thought the first 20 minutes, like, you, I thought Raiders were quite good. I thought they were playing a lot of good stuff. It just seemed to change, and you will hear me rant a wee bit about the left side of defence, but Olympiacos certainly, it wasn't a friendly for them. No, it certainly wasn't. It certainly wasn't. They weren't biting out of a challenge. The thing is, see with the left side of the defence, um, one of the games I went to pre-season last season, we would be played a suitor in Barisic, and it was the exact same problem. Ball coming in behind, ball getting played through the lines. exact same thing happened against the uh, Olympiacos. And it's, it's, it's good, I suppose, in a sense that it's, it's all it's stuff people can work on now. And before we go to Kilmarnock next week, um, I not not an entirely impressive friendly. As I say it was more. I think a big part of the performances with the with the players is they're getting a lot of running during the week before before they're getting into these games. So Bill's constantly saying the the boys are heavy legged. Um, I don't know if that's got anything to do with the performance, but I'm struggling. I'm struggling to see what style of play with kind of format we're using. It's, it likes to change system. I've noticed it likes, uh, especially the second half, it likes one of the centre minutes to drop in and kind of make a back three at certain times they match. Um, but the more games we play, the team plays together, the more they're going to gel, the better the performances are going to get. It's just a case of, especially coming up for these Champions League qualifiers, we need to get through this um, first qualifying round because there's a, a prize, there's prize money of £5 million sitting there. And then, to come out of the playoff or straight into Europa League playoff. Um so something needs to click on Saturday. Yeah. And Andrew, I'm I'm prone to a wee rant about Borna Barisic <clears throat> and it's mainly out of affection for the past, but Borna Barisic is done at Rangers Football Club. Yeah. Now, what I mean by that is I don't mean that he's done as a player. Don't mean that at all. I think Borna Barisic could go on and have a really good career somewhere. It can't be at Rangers because Borna Barisic could be could have eight amazing games at Rangers, one bad game, and all I'll think about is the Leela Bada game. That's all that will stick and that that sticks with me constantly. We're seeing now the fans, the majority of fans, leap to leap to that conclusion as well. They can't get that out of their head. And he can't get it out of his head. And that's the problem here. Ben Davis, I don't think is good. I don't think he's the answer. I certainly don't think Barisic and Davis is answered together. We've gone to Yelmaz in the Hoffenheim game where I think his kind of limitations were exposed a wee bit, but I think you can maybe make more of an excuse for Yelmaz than you can Barisic. Barisic has been there too long. We've been talking for years about that squad needs refreshed. It's needing refreshed in terms of Barisic because he can't, he won't get any better at Rangers because he's the, the, the scars are there. The scars are there and the scars are there with him. I don't think Borna Barisic has a future at Rangers and if Michael Beale thinks he does, if he thinks he can get better out of him, I doubt that. 
I really doubt that Borna Barisic is the long term answer at left back. I think now forward's been a priority. You need to get in a a kind of decent level in terms of kind of age left side centre back to kind of partner Goldson and partner Suter. And then you need to get a left back in to replace Barisic. Yelmaz is fine. I think Yelmaz will develop. I think Yelmaz needs somebody kind of at that left centre back position alongside them of a good age who can help him out. I don't think we saw that against Hoffenheim. Borna Barisic needs to go. I totally agree. For me, Borna Barisic needed to go when he put his head in his hands before they scored the third goal at their place. Um, you know, when you see a defender just kind of basically chuck it there and then. Um, he, we saw especially a lot last season where he'd come across the halfway line, stop, get caught out. Um, and we saw that in pre-season as well. And they um, never where... used to have that. Never see if you watch when he's first. I always hundred percent. His first 100%. spell. His first. His first or maybe second season. The second season he really came through. <laughs> Would never see that from him. Now it's, it's just, definitely a psychological problem. It's this crept this... into his game and he can't yeah. get it out of his head. I totally agree. I totally agree. You know, some players can stagnate a little bit in their positions. Don't get me wrong. You know, we know what Barisic can do. There's the, you know, we've we've seen the assists in big games where he'll put um, you know, a ball right on someone's head. But, you know, that the the time is up for Bona now. Um it's good that we've seen Yilmaz. It's good that we can see what he can do. Is he the long term answer? Probably not. Um, but th- th- there are concerns um, with the defence going into the season. Obviously, Conor Goldson uh, does get a lot of stick, but he is fairly solid in ushering that defence at times. Um, so, yeah, it'll be interesting. We've got a week to go <laughs> with the defence. We'll, who knows who's going to start? Go. Well, I think, obviously, with the Hoffenheim game, we saw a lot of positives. I thought Lammers, again, was terrific. You can see his control. He's he's obviously a very technical player. I think he's going to be really good in terms of you know, just in terms of his technique. I just think he's going to add so much to that Rangers team. We saw the life left side of defence get exposed, but I think you can make more of an excuse. Yelmaz is still very young. So we can maybe look at Yelmaz and say, Yeah, he needs a an experienced player alongside him. Johnny Afeco, I think he could be really good going forward. I don't think he's ready in terms of to be that type of player. Yelmaz, you can make more of it. It's just I really liked what I've seen so far from Yelmaz, but I think he got exposed. His weaknesses got exposed against Hoffenheim. If you're going to start with him, you need to have an experienced left sided centre back alongside him. That's the only way he'll develop. Aye, definitely, definitely. Um, it's the only thing we've really not had at a club, obviously, with Talanda, who was another player that um, didn't have a great injury record with in his time with us. Um, somebody like that is kind of what you're looking for. Um, you're looking for somebody to talk the boy through the match. I really, really like Yilmaz. I think he's dynamic going forward. He offers a variety in an attacking sense, but he's getting caught out far too easily um, on a counter-attack. Um, I noticed, I think it was maybe against Alan Piacos, the boy kind of out-muscled him on the ball as well. I thought that when he was injured last season, I thought Rangers would have some sort of training programme in place for him to bulk him up a wee bit. Um, to get used to the physicality because there's going to be um, teams in this league that are just going to stick a big tall guy wide right and use him as a focal point. So it's something we definitely need experience in. We need an experienced centre back to come in and you've got to feel it for Connor Goldson as well. He's had a, he's a more um, centre back partners than, than God knows who. Since he signed for Rangers, he's never had a steady sort of centre half. Um, to strike up a good partnership with. Obviously, you've got Suter there. He's he's right-sided. He might be okay in the short term, but also he's got another sort of um, bad injury record. So we need to find the money for somewhere or get a loan or something. We need somebody in that's going to be able to speak Yilmaz through a match. Yeah, I agree with that. I I think if, if Sifuentes is done, I would say Davis, get the money you can for him because I, I think he's still one of the people. very few players who could... Mm-hmm. Because of his English background, I think you could still make the money back that you you made you spent on him. Barisic, I think the way that his his Rangers careers went has been quite sad because if his first season took a lot of time again, he really excelled on that second season under Gerard. I thought he he kicked on massively. Yeah. Then you've just saw this. I think it was under Gio that I first noticed it, but it's it's bad now. It's proper. 
all I've noticed it from him. And it's now a case of the, the left back who I used to love watching going forward, putting crosses in. He can still put a good cross in. That will never, ever leave his game. But on the ball, the psychological thing for him is to just, there's no, there's no, there's no confidence well, at all. Not confidence no. he's been doing to the guy. And when the fans build that opinion of him as well, he's never going to get it back. Harry Maguire was going for 75 million. He's now, everybody thinks he's a joke. Right. And he's, do you know what I mean? And that, I'm not comparing the two players, but I'm, I'm just mean like, we're always going to have that opinion of Harry Maguire. So right. never, never, Rangers fans are never not going to have that opinion about Borna Barris. It's so, I think there's positives to take for pre-season. I think there's obviously, like some of the link-up play, I thought the second goal on Saturday was terrific. The Lammers header, the build-up play between Danilo Dill, then the ball in from Tavernier. I think you're going to see a lot of that. I think that'll work really well against a low block, as you say, but I think there's still kind of things to be ironed out. I think it's quite good now that you're not the, they'll spend a lot of time in training between now and Saturday. I think you'll see a lot of the players. I wouldn't be surprised if he puts Danilo straight in on Saturday. Like I wouldn't, I don't think it would be out the realms of possibility if he just puts them straight in. The other things, obviously, the plastic pitch, and we'll do a full preview of Kilmarnock later on, but I would say the biggest positive for me of pre-season was just looking at the kind of, like, a lot of the players, the height, there's got there's a lot more physicality in the team. I think that's been Rangers' biggest weakness for a long time, Andrew. And I think now we're, you're seeing the likes of Lammers, you can see he's tall, Dill, I think, potential to be really good in a tackle. Seema, I think, could be, I think he's raw. It could be, it could it could be very frustrating at times. Dessers have seen enough to say, yeah, he's going to be very physical. And I just think there's a lot more in terms of kind of what that Rangers team should be. I think that's what Bill's tried to get this this summer. A lot more physicality, a lot more height. And I just think that there's there's a lot to like about his business. Definitely agree. Um, I think we've stagnated on the past a bit too much. Um, with this side, you know, we've we've always made like little additions to the squad. You know, we've still had players like Morelos as the focal point. Um, and you know, we have had to, you know, let the ghost of 55 go and finally clear out the team and go, right, we need to start again a bit. Um, you know, in an attacking sense, you know, you can you can look at the kind of midfield to the front and you can see, you know, quite a few ways of playing everyone, you know, and the, the good thing is there's you know, you look at Campwell at the minute, you know, Campwell, you know, we saw towards the end of last season was in more of a central kind of uh, role behind, you know, the strikers at the minute. He's been kind of moved out. So there's a bit of experimentation going on. Um, Lammers seems to be, I think, um, is he just sitting behind the kind of, we've seen in a couple of the games behind the strike force. Um, and, you know, he, he's got a good header on him. Same as Dessers, I've seen in the video, he's got a good header on him. We, we never utilised set pieces enough last season. One of, um, you know, that lot's weaknesses was set pieces. You know, we didn't exploit it enough. Um, and, you know, we, we don't get me wrong, we're good with dead balls. You know, Tav will, you know, score a free kick like a penalty. Um, but, you know, we've, we've had for far too long that Tav, you know, ends up the top goal scorer, you know, when you've got strikers in the team. Um, so you know it is you know it's a new dawn. It's always exciting, you know, to see. Um, we've just got hope that you know these guys gel together, you know, quickly. Um, and you know, one thing I have noticed from the friendlies uh, to take away, is we seem to be. I know friendlies, you know, we can't always take as much away, but um, a little bit of that Beal effect where we always seem to be better in the second half. <laughs> and don't get me wrong, that can be to do with substitutions, and you know, sometimes a whole team comes off. But uh, hopefully, we're not going to see that this season again. <laughs> Yeah, and I think it's it's obviously going to take a bit of time to gel. I wouldn't be surprised if the Kilmarnock game isn't the, the best spectacle, but I think Rangers will have enough. We'll we'll do that later on. But I'm going to set you all set you all a wee bit of predictions. This is the, the the first show before the that's the last show before the start of the season. So we're going to have a a wee bit of fun in this show. We're going to do some early season predictions. So we'll get around it to the panel one to one. A wee we small. Reason why you think your your answer you're going to give, Scott. First of all, realistic targets. So, but how many trophies will Rangers win? How many co- trophies? Are conference saying Rangers are going to win. Um, I want to say treble, but <laughs> yeah, it's a new squad. They're still gelling together. I would probably say the league and a, a league and cup double. Um, would be minimum expectation for me and Europa League football. I'd have, I'd a uh, I really. Uh, Last season, any time we started to get to kind of get some form under Gio, we would go and get beat. 
six or seven nil for uh, off a of Liverpool. So I don't think Cham- I think Champions League football's a, st- a step too far. Um, I know the club needs the money financially, but I miss Thursday nights. I miss our music. I miss mm-hmm. everything about it. Um, it's a it's a tournament where we're confident in. We'll be able to get plenty of coefficient points. We'll be able to, I, I feel Europa League football is a better platform for us to maintain a good title challenge because um, definitely for the, for the season ahead, I've got, I've got high, high, high expectations. Andrew, I think domestic silverware is going to be as It always is, but this season in particular, obviously, because of how poor the last season was in terms of silverware, Celtic were in a treble again. Rangers need to be better on domestic football, and I think it's going to be massive for Michael Beale as well. Like, What's your realistic targets for for the season in terms of silverware? I'm going to agree with Scott. I think um, a double, I think, is realistic. We need to get, um, especially the League Cup, we need to get that. We need to win that at some point. That just needs to happen. It's been far too long now that we haven't had that in the trophy cabinet. It used to be our cup um, and definitely the League title in there. So a cup double, one League title. Um, I'll take the League Cup with it. Um, you know, I, I think it just, it's, the League is, uh, you know, it has to happen this season, you know. Um, you know, we can't have them going off into the sunset again. Um, you know, we're opening that gap up. We've got this opportunity now where you finish top, you know, obviously that might change in the next couple of seasons, but if you finish top, you get the automatic entry to the Champions League. I know what you were saying there, Scott, about um, Europa League nights, and actually I do agree. I think, you know, we wouldn't have said this like a decade ago, would be, but, you know, Europa League nights have been fantastic for us. We've got those coefficient points, and uh, this season that could help us with the Club World Cup. Um, you know, which is um, potentially could happen with us being the, the highest amount of coefficient points. So it's uh, it's an interesting one because uh, you always want to be at the dining at the top table. But uh, I don't know if last season, if it all came too soon because you'd have a bad game and then you were in it the next week. So you didn't have a couple of weeks to get it out of your system. Um, you know, and of course, this team's still gelling together. Um, so yeah, I think Europa League might be a, a safer route. Ideally, Champions League finish third in the Europa League. Um, that'll probably be the best financially, but um, might be a step too far at the minute. Which of the signings so far will have the biggest impact? Scott? Sifuentes. I'm definitely going to go for Sifuentes. I think he's going to he's going to come in and change that midfield. I think we're going to see an even better version of Raskin this season. I think um, Cantwell, depending on it's about we're a wee bit unsure about kind of role we're going to see Campbell in this season. I thought he was really effective in the 10 last season. Um, and I was actually going to kind of go ahead and say he would be my player of the year for this year. But I, I, I don't know what Bill's plan is for Campbell. Um, but Sifuentes is definitely going to be a game changer for us, I think. I just think he's overall game. He's physicality, he's engine. Um, I think it's going to take us to another level. Sifuentes for you, Andrew. Who you got? I would go for. I think I'd go for Sam Lammers. Um, I agree with Sifuentes. I think he's quite a good all-round player. He'll add something in the attack. But there's something I've seen about Lammers in pre-season. Um, you know, it's pouncing on mistakes. You know, in Scotland, that's where you get goals. Um, you know, especially when you've got you know 10, 15 people in the in the box. I remember watching the videos when he signed, and um, even though he didn't score a lot of goals, the goals he scored, he had close ball control. He was taking it around people in tight spaces. I do like, I do like that, and we do need that. Um, so I think, I think Sam Lammers, I think he'll be, I think he'll be pretty decent. I'm kind of leaning towards Sam Lammers. I signing, I think he'd be really good as Kieran Dill. I've just seen enough just in terms of what he brings and just like I don't necessarily think he'll be a starter every week, but I think just as an impact player he could be a he could make a massive difference. And I think there's gonna be less pressure on him, just in terms of the obviously no fee. I think Keenan Dowell, I think Danilo as well. If Danilo hits a ground well, I think Danilo could be frightening. I think he could be really good. He could be Rangers Kyogo. Now what I mean by that is is that Kyogo you could tell instantly he was so good at what he did. It was his IQ, his movement. I think that he looked similar to that. I think what he, what he could bring to Rangers is frightening, and I think Rangers have been needing a striker like that for a long, long time. But I'm going to play it safe. I think Keenan Dow could be pretty good. I think Keenan Dow could be the one I like. Let's move on next. Which youth player can make his mark in the first team squad now? If I every season, I don't think I've ever ever get this right because Rangers' way of bringing youth players through is terrible. I've said that openly for many, many years. I think there's one that could really shine this year, but 
I'll, I'll go last. Scott, who do you think could be the youth player to watch? Zach Lovelace. I'm okay. going to go for Zach Lovelace. I think um, the fact the boy was getting first team games at uh, Millwall shows his quality. I think he assisted five in a, a B team game yesterday. Yep. Um, I think there's going to there's potentially going to be a time where the forward line gets injured or he gets 10 minutes off the bench. Something along them lines. Um, he's going to come in with an impact. Could get a start in the cup. I really do think like, he's going to score maybe five plus goals for us this season. It's this is definitely going to be a breakthrough year for me. Okay, so when Zach Lovelace breaks through, we're going to play this week clip because we predicted it here first. Andrew, who do you think to be the, the you know what? to watch? I'm going to go exactly the same. Ah. I remember um, seeing the clips when he was at Millwall, and the fans don't want to lose him. And I think it's been very clever. Um, not getting him right into the first team straight away, you know, keeping him in that B team, you know, seeing what he can do. And, you know, he just goes, goes. He absolutely, he just, he, he, I think he came on for the first team, didn't he, last season, uh, towards the end of the season in a game. Um, and you could see, you know, there were little signs there. But for me, you know what, another year in the Bs, good idea. Um, it'll be interesting because they've got the, I think they're in the Challenge Cup coming up uh, in a week or so mm -hmm. against Spartans. Um, so that'll be, that'll be a good test. Um, you know, so there's a good few players in the B team now. Um, I think, you know, we were getting to a point where through last season when we were, you know, been able to see them in the Lowland League, um, you know, you could identify some, some good talent, you know, playing against, you know, fairly decent opposition. Um, but you know it's got to be Lovelace. I think you know that that boy's definitely got a good future for first team football, and hopefully it's with us. I don't disagree with the, the Zach Lovelace, but I just I, I will rave every week in this podcast about Bailey Rice. I think Bailey Rice could be a future captain for Rangers. I think he could be potentially top class. Just think for for what he's at, he's he commanding the first team and the, those friendlies. I thought he looked really good. I think he's been really good for the B team. I think whether he gets his chance, I hope he gets a chance. I think he will. I think he'll get a couple of uh, games and I think we could see a real special talent on our hands. I'm, I've never been as excited about a Rangers youth, youth player since Barry Ferguson. And I really mean that. I think he could do that. If you don't mind me cutting in, I would also say that Bailey Rice is potentially a long-term replacement for Raskin. I think if Raskin 100%. really has a good season this season, you don't need to go out and buy another midfielder. Just bring the boy in if he's good enough and play him. Yeah. yeah. And I think it's, it, they've been very careful as well with him. I don't expect, I don't expect them to be in the, I think keeping him in the kind of B team route, I think you could see a lot more of him in that regard this season. And then just obviously you've got a player for the future. So Bailey Rice would comfortably be for me. Top goal scorer, Scott? Oof. Probably Danilo. I need to go Danilo. I think the, the fee we've paid for what I've seen of him in um, the old classic YouTube clips um, from what I've read about him, I think he's going to come in and Say hey, they're all right. I think I Danilo will go with 20 plus goals. Danilo, Andrew. It's an interesting one. You know, I do think Danilo will be will be our main outlet for goals. Um, but you know, I think Tav will creep up behind him. I think he will, you know, for every defensive <laughs> oh, mistake he makes. If it's James Tav think... if it's James Tav on the air, I think <laughs> should, should it'll bomb. be a bad season if that's the case. Yeah. No, do you know what? Um I think it has to be Danilo, doesn't it? I think it has to be Danilo. I think, you know, he'll be the main attacking threat. Uh, there'll be plenty of service. You know, when you've got Cifuentes and uh, just looking at that middle to front, I think he's going to have a lot. He's going to have a lot of fuel for goals. He really is. I think it will be Danilo. I think I'll be, I'll be very surprised if it's not Danilo, just in terms of what he's... he's he looks to me to be a... I, I hate saying it, but he looks to me to be a kind of fox-in-the-box type who's just going to be exactly where I don't think Rangers have had that in a long time so I think they need somebody like that if I don't disagree with like Tavernier Tavernier will score goals he'll score penalties and Rangers get a lot of penalties so <laughs> <laughs> uh, never noticed yeah so he will score Tavernier will obviously be up there but I think Danilo I think we need to see something different this season we need to see the strikers last season Cholak obviously came in hit the ground running, but just obviously injuries didn't help him after that and he just never really regained that kind of goal scoring thing. So for somebody to do that all season, I think it would be massive for Rangers. It'd be massive for Rangers if they could do that. So I think Danilo is the one that could go that. I wouldn't put any if Roof can get a run together. I think <laughs> Roof if Roof can get a run together, I think he could be twenty goals, but it's it's that thing. If he stays fit, if Kemar Roof stays fit, he'll score a lot of goals for Rangers. So I think Danilo Danilo's the one. Player of the year 
I think this is easy, but I'll go with you, Scott. Campbell, Todd Campbell. Okay. I think the last six months that he came in and played, I actually put him as Rangers player of the year just for that six months alone. Um, I think he's been there, he's established, he's got an eye for goal, an eye for a pass, he's got a good tackle on him as well. Um, I'm going to definitely going to go with Todd Campbell. Okay. Andrew? If all things go to plan, um, then I think it'll be Danilo. I okay. think if he hits the ground running and scores a lot of goals, I think it could be interesting. I think because you know it's been a while since we've had a proper you know thirty plus goals striker. <laughs> so I'm jinxing it all now, of course. But uh, yeah, if all goes to all goes to plan, I think he could very well be Player of the Year. I think uh, I see the camera. Like my my worry with camera was. Is he going to have that John Lundstrom thing where he was so good at the start and then just kind of maybe doesn't have that positional sense? Because I haven't seen him play. I know it's pre-season. I know it's hard to judge, but he's playing in a different position in pre-season. I hope they, they, they kind of find a way to work, work him because he's so useful going forward. I hope he doesn't fall into that. But I, I think Cantwell, is, we know he's got the talent. We know he's potentially, he's a star. I think he is really, I think he's going to be the, the main man in terms of the fans. I think he's the, the fans' favourite at the moment. I think Raskin's a cut above. I think Raskin could just kick on again. I think Raskin will be here. I think this is Jelovic type player. I think he could be here just for a I think he could be here just for a wee bit, but he could make such an impact. We saw against Newcastle. I look back, there was a game last season, I can't remember who it was against. I think it was maybe Hart. Somebody can can correct me if I'm wrong. It just there was points in the game where Rangers were just it was the game where when Michael Beale said we should have scored four or five. I think it was Hearts. And it was just you could see straight away just this guy's just too good to be here. And I think that's a, that's the thing. I think you'll you'll see that this season. You might see him play a bit deeper, which I don't think is a bad thing because I think he'll he'll help that that because I think a lot of Rangers midfielders in the past have just been happy to sit. I think Raskin, if you play him deeper, you'll still see you won't see a gap because I think players will cover for him. And I think he's just going to be the real deal again. I think he'll kick on. I think Raskin, it's easy for me. If Raskin is what I think he's going to be, I think he'll be the best player in the league. I think he's already close to that. I think there's a he's he's certainly I think could be I think he's Rangers' best player. I think in what in terms of talent, I think he's Rangers' best player in terms of his position. So for me it's Nicholas Raskin. Move into the next one. Unsung player to watch. Now, what I mean by this is a player that's still at the club who I don't think will be who you don't think will be sold, who could maybe improve further this season, could maybe come to come to life again this season. Scott, who you got? Um, I would have said Sakala. Um, obviously, Sakala doesn't look as if he's going to be away for much longer. Going to be come reports. Um, so I would probably need to go with. No, I'm going to go with Kamar Roof. Kamar Roof can stay injury free. Obviously, we were getting our we got our best run out Kamar Roof when the last time Doctor Waller was here. Yep. Um, I think if we can get that level of fitness, I was so it, tempted to put him for signing of the season. By the way, oh, I definitely. Hundred percent. It's a stroke of genius. It's an absolute stroke of genius, and it's probably the biggest aspect to the club that needed improvement for some of his medical department. Totally agree. He brought that guy back in. Knows the club. He ran it well the last time he was here. He also had come out with playing Fippa. Mm-hmm. I think that's what's needed. Yeah, I'd agree with that. Uh, Andrew? I totally agree. The signing from Leicester of Dr. Waller is, is the best signing we've probably made all the year. Unsung hero there, definitely. Uh, but hopefully we can keep everyone uh, injury-free. Um, I was actually thinking it will be between Goldston possibly and uh, Dowell. I think okay. uh, Dowell could be a bit of an unsung hero. You know, we saw him clattering into challenges, not scared, um, winning the ball back. So you know, he could be he could be quite interesting. I think as well, Goldson. I think we'll realise because I'm kind of stuck between the two. But I think Goldson, um, when we see him back in the defence, I think we'll, we'll, the defence will be showing up a little bit because um, it's it's a bit hodgepodge at the minute. But um, yeah, I think I think I think I'll go Dowell just over Goldson. I think. I think it could be Tom Lawrence. Oh, that's a good I think show, if he actually. comes back in, that's if he comes show. back in, he could be... Because we saw a lot of him before he got injured. He was he was that guy who was getting... I remember the goal against Hibs. Nobody had done that as a Rangers midfield on years. So to see somebody like him, I think, yeah, I think it's really good. I know 
I don't think we'll see Tom Lawrence and Kamar Roof maybe playing a lot at the start in the competitive level, but just to see them in pre-season, I think was really good. I think Lawrence, I also think Hadji could kick on again, just to, I think a pre-season will have done him the world of good. Now, that might be difficult because I'm also going to say Hadji for the next one, but I think Tom Lawrence is the safe bet because I think he, he will be, once he gets back to full fitness, he could be a really good player. I don't think he'll be a starter. I think he'll be potentially one of those players who kind of come on. You'll maybe see him after the Europa League game. I don't think he'll be in the Europa League squad, which I think will maybe be a, a sign that you maybe see him after Europa League games, maybe in the Sunday. I think uh, I think Tom Lawrence, to me, is a safe bet for that. I also think Dujon Sterling could be really good. I think he could be one whose his, his versatility could be ideal. Next one. Point. yeah, uh, Tom Lawrence, for me, is the one. Next one, I'm just going to ask you to give me a few names. Who will be sold before the end of the window? Do you mind if I go first? On you go. Right. And no order of when. I just think this would be the best interest for, for all parties, including the, the fans. Borna Barisic, top of the list. Glenn Kamar is gone. I would sell Ben Davis and get somebody in cheaper and that you can develop. Get a young left back in, maybe like a Batty type, a 20, 20 21 year old who you can get and maybe get a cross border fee. I think that's the only two bits I would I would get in now. A, a left centre back and a, a young developing left back that you can switch with Yilmaz. Wouldn't be surprised if you saw Hadji going. I just think he's he's one of the, the most sellable assets. I think just his name alone you would get money for. Matondo, I fully expect him to go. Sakala, it frustrates the life out of me, but I wouldn't sell. I think if you as an impact sub, I think he could be real good. I think as a starter, we were speaking to before we come on here, no, I wouldn't have him as a starter, but as an impact player, I think he could, his stats are really good when you look at it from that way. He's, he's got a lot of goals in his game. I think with 20 minutes to go, if you're struggling, needing needing something, I think he could be ideal for that. Scott Wright will be amazed if he's here. And Matondo, I think if you can get anything for him, I would just sell him and just kind of cut your, cut your losses there. I don't, whether there will be losses, I don't know, but it's a lot of money Rangers have spent on him. I don't think he's going to contribute the way the, the money will suggest. I would be amazed if Rabbi Matondo's here come the end of August. And I'm kind of, I kind of think that's me. Like, I don't really think Wright will go, Matondo will go. I think Hadji could go. Barisic, Davis, I kind of struggle. I don't think anybody else. Maybe McCrory, I don't want McCrory to go, but I would I say it's very likely he'll go. Scott? Um, just basically all the ones you listed, I was just going to add my to the list. I do think Sakala's going to go. Um, it's not something I'm a big fan of. I think Sakala was probably one of our most effective players when Bill came in and took over. Mm-hmm. And they get a run of games. I know what you mean, they frustrated the living daylight, so every single one is. But um, he's also one of these players that's, that's going to pop up and score a volley midway through the second half. I bet you Dundee United will set up three at Hibs. Well, what he did, uh, no, I think he assisted two at Hibs and scored one, assisted Cholak for two of them. Um, I can't really think anybody else to add to the list, to be brutally honest with you. Scott. I, would, I would like to see a couple of loan signings going out. I'd like to see Lowry going out and loan. I think that'd be perfect for uh, all, all a, parties. He needs a ball dominant team. Yeah. I would like him to go to maybe a Hearts. Wouldn't be a fan if he went to Hibs, obviously, but somebody that's going to have possession of the ball, I, th- I would like him to stay in Scotland. Um, Due to the physicality, like that way we can get a look at him. It, it can have an impact on games against Celtic as well. Really put his name it, really put his name out there. Leon King, I would like to see him go and win. Um, try to think there's any other youths I would like to see. Like to see, you know, that's well, probably the main two for me. See the thing with Lowry for me is is that I find it very similar to see when Christie was at Celtic. You, he was he was start a wee while away for getting into the first team, but he went to Aberdeen. Done a lot of damage for clubs against like for like he obviously couldn't play against Celtic, but he done a lot of damage against other clubs. Exactly. I think some Lowry's needing some of like that, and I, I don't I don't necessarily think there's behaviour issues, but I think he needs a he needs a manager, a kind of old head to kind of get him through. I think he's been through a lot of stuff in the past year or so, so to get him maybe a an experienced head just to kind of nurse him a bit, Maybe's give him right. a I give him a wee bit of. A kind of psychological care, I think, would be really good. I wouldn't be surprised if he went to like a Livingston. I know that goes against the the ball carrying, but see somewhere like that where he can really shine, mm-hmm. like a Kilmarnock, like even maybe a Derek McKinnon, somebody like that. I wouldn't be overly surprised. I think it could be. It, it would thrive in anywhere 
I just don't think he's ready yet to. He's maybe ready, but I think just he needs a year just to get his head together. Maybe a club where he's going to get a lot more games. I don't think the B team. I, I think going out and loan to a Premiership team would be far better than playing in the B team another year. I'll be surprised if Alex Lowry doesn't go out and loan. I don't like the Northampton idea. I think that's no, a bad no. idea. I think somewhere in Scotland would be ideal. Andrew, Yem, do you want to add to that before we get into the command game? Pretty much what you said. Um, we do need. We have a lot of players to clear out now. Um, you know, I think Barisic um does need to go, but I think you know unless we're not unless we are bringing somebody in, you know, development wise for left back. Uh, with the Omas, I don't potentially maybe see him going just yet. Um, even though there was kind of hints possibly uh, last week. Um, yeah, you know, I think McCrory needs to. He needs to go on loan for his career. He did fairly well at Livingston. Um. Yeah, pretty much, pretty much what you said. Um, Matondo, uh, it's definitely a cut. The losses now, I think. Um, you know, a lot of clubs have seen some promise in him, but he, he's really delivered. Um, got a lot of speed. Um, not much else. Uh, Sakala, I'd like to keep, like you say. Um, he's he's an enigma of a player. You know, he can't do the 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 two inch pass to somebody just next to him, but he'll he'll score a wonder goal through the crack of the goal. You know, he'll just he, he's one of them players great legs, you know, good touch at times, so, yeah. Yeah, I can certainly agree. We'll move into the Kilmarnock game on Saturday, obviously quarter past five kickoff. We are going to see a new look Rangers team in a new season. First game of the season is always strange. Scott, give us a prediction. First of all, give us a lineup. Give us a lineup and a score prediction. Lineup is Butland, Tavernier, Golds and Suta, Yilmaz. Midfield three of Cantwell, Raskin and Dibble. And maybe a front three of Sima, Dessers and Daniel. Okay, interesting. Score? Um, I'm going to say it's going to be tight for most of the match, but we're going to be 3-1 winners. 3-1 winners, interesting. Andrew, same again. Starting line up. Score rugby pitch. Park's always an interesting one. Um, it feels like we always used to play at Rugby Park opening game of the season and we'd always drop points there. Um, um I think I, I agree with the team pretty much. I think that I think we will see Goldson. I think uh we'll see him back in it. Uh I think Suit will be at left back. Sorry, Suit will be next to him with uh Yomaz at left back. Uh midfield, uh, I think I think we're gonna see frustratingly, I think we're gonna see um Lundstrom in there with Raskin and Campwell. I just, it's just Bill does it. <laughs> he just does it. You see him on the team sheet. Um, I'd like to see Campwell kind of in behind the strikers, but I don't think we'll see that. I think we'll see him maybe out on the right, possibly uh, with Lammers there, depending. Um, Dessers and uh, like you said at the top of the show, Scott, I think, you know, it could be a surprise, but I think we might see Danilo start. Um, yeah. I, yeah. Not, not too many that I would disagree with. Um, obviously, I was. <laughs> I don't think I want to see Lundstrom start, but I just, you know, you just have that feeling you'll see him on the on the team sheet. It wouldn't surprise me if Lundstrom started. I think we will see. I think Botland's a certainty. Obviously, he'll start. Of course, Tavern yeah. near Suter, I would say. I don't think Goldson's ready. I don't even think he's training yet. So I, I wouldn't, I would say, especially going on that pitch, I wouldn't see him being risked for that game. Mm. I would say Suter, and as much as it pains me, Davis and Barisic, I think, will start. I, I can see that happening. I think Lundstrom, Raskin, Cantwell, Dowell maybe. I don't know. I maybe, you maybe see Dowell. It's quite hard, actually. I think you might, as much as I said, I think Danilo might start. I think he'll go with uh, Seema and Dessers, Lammers in behind. Cantwell, Raskin, Lundstrom. Yeah, I think that it could be a really, I think, I don't think it's going to be, I think it's going to be impossible to predict a team. I really do. I don't see. Even the I'll, shape. To be honest, <laughs> where they go? Sorry, the only reason I see Sima starting is because he started every preseason match. Yeah, he played nearly. He's played quite a bit of football. Yeah, and if especially I can see Komala going a five at the back, and I see that oh, four totally. one, four one two one two going working against that. I'm not so sure because they've went three at the back for most of the league cup games. So I was like, yeah, against us, it's definitely going to be five. 
if it's five, I think if it's five, I don't know if that narrow midfield works. I think you're going to see your fullbacks doing a lot of running. So whether he goes maybe a four three three, maybe as Lammers kind of as a an inside left and re- see as an inside right and kind of figures out a way we can't well and Dill. I don't know. I think the, the team will be hard for that. Wouldn't surprise me if we started Danilo. Des as I think is a certainty to start. So again, it's going to be really interesting. I don't think it's. I think it's going to be a whole week of predicting where the, the team. I wouldn't be overly surprised if it goes with Danilo, but I think right now, if you were to say to me, I think he could go four three three and old old fashioned, and go with Sima, Dessers, and Lammers as a front three. That wouldn't surprise me at all. Score predictions. I think Rangers will will. I'll be a classic away game. Rangers will go one 0 down early on. It'll be a bit of a a uh, part of the bus job from Kilmarnock. Tavernier will score a penalty and you'll get a winning goal from Danilo. I think it'll be two one Rangers. I think I think that's a safe bet. I think two one Rangers. Scott, just remind me yours again, three one. Three one. I think it's going to be um two one for um, maybe say I, I can see it like two and up in the sixty eighth minute, Kelly score. Mm. And then I'll put his in a wee bit of a knife edge, and then I can see his score kind of towards the end of the match to make, make a point safe. Andrew, what was yours? I'm going to go 1-1. One, one. Just because uh, there used to be a thing where the team that used to draw the first game of the season used to win the league back in the early 2000s. It always used to be, and it always, for some reason, we go to Rugby Park and get a draw. I think it's going to be, I think the squad's going to struggle a little bit at first, um, struggle with kind of Scottish football the way it is. Um, I, I know, I'm, I'm sure it's been explained to them and, you know, time and time again how it's going to be. But, you know, I think uh, it'll be a bit of a shock for some of these players. They'll have the ball a lot um, and it'll be unlocking that defence. Now, normally my predictions are wrong, so it's perfect that I go for a 1-1. Um, so obviously I want to see us win, but uh, I'll go for the 1-1, I think, just to... Uh, I think. Excellent. Excellent. Yeah, it's going to be a very interesting start for the season. Obviously, we're, Rangers will learn their Champions League opponents. Once the once the opponents have been revealed, we will do a wee piece on the website, giving you more info about either Jenk or Servet. So stay tuned all week. We're going to have a lot of content going out. And obviously, we'll have post-match reaction on Saturday. So it's going to be a very interesting week. We'll look forward to it. It's been a pleasure to work with our guests on this week. First of all, Andrew Simpson, thank you. No, thank you, Scott. Good to speak to you, both Scots. <laughs> Appreciate it. And to Scott Mackay, thank you very much for coming on. Appreciate it. Thanks for having me, mate. Brilliant. Thank you very much to everyone who's tuned in. Please follow the Rangers Assessment on YouTube and our podcast channels. Cheers. Cheers.